Just last week, Adobe released a new version of Photoshop and of Lightroom Classic. Lightroom Classic is version 14 and Photoshop is called Photoshop 2025. Now, when you go into Photoshop and you look at the about page on Photoshop, it'll say the version is actually 26.0.0, but it's easy enough to remember as Photoshop 2025. There are a few new features that they've included in these upgrades and some are very useful to me. In fact, I have an image that I shot on a recent trip to Grand Teton National Park that I think is really gonna benefit from one of these new features. So let me show you how this all works. Hi, I'm Terry Vanner, I'm a professional photographer, and I'm teaching you how to get the most out of Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. I use both of these programs all the time. So when the new upgrades were announced, I upgraded my system right away. Now, since you're likely on the Creative Cloud system, these upgrades are free. So all you have to do is take the time to download them. You can go into your Creative Cloud app that sits on your desktop and get all the upgrades to all of the Adobe programs that you use. It only takes a couple of minutes. While this is considered an upgrade by Adobe, there are only a few things that I noticed in the upgrades that are really worth taking the time to understand. The improvements to the remove and generate features have improved. So let me show you how these new features work. We're inside of Lightroom Classic. If we go over here to the about page, you can see here that this is the version I'm working on, 14.0.1. So there actually was a new version that has been released since I even downloaded the first version. So they're gonna to continue to make these updates as you go. So I actually have my setup for automatic updates. So they'll automatically update when there's that new slight version that comes out. So our first image here is a stock image of a guy walking in the park. Now, if you'd like to work on these exact same images, I'll leave a link below. I'll put these images up on my website. You can download them. And just for educational purposes, you can use them for learning how to use these new tools. So as we look at this, we've got a guy who uh, is walking in the park. And let's say, for instance, we want to remove him. So we come over here, and, you know, in Lightroom, we've got all the standard things. None of the architecture really has changed. But we go into the Remove tool, and if you recall from the last upgrade, they had a, a version on here that said Early Access. So that was kind of a beta version of the generative remove tools that they put in here. So you can see down here, we've got our three typical ones, the, the clone stamp, the healing brush, as well as the remove. So the remove is the only thing that's really changed here. So down here, you've got the ability to use generative AI, and then you also have detect objects, which is new. And there's, see, there's no button that says early access. So this is how this thing works now. So let's go ahead and bring our brush over. And we're going to leave detect objects off for a second. So if we go ahead and bring this around our subject that we want to remove, see how we didn't catch the inside. Now you can easily go back in and paint that if you like. So if we start over and this time we're going to use the detect objects, we can just draw a line kind of around this subject. And then Lightroom will think about it and fill in all the rest of the area. So it makes working a little bit faster with having that detect objects. And as we look down here, we now have, we can see this is our color. If we want to have a different mask, we can click on this and create a different mask color. But for right now, we'll leave it at red. That's pretty popular. We have the add and subtract. So if you wanted to add something, you would just add. And then if you wanted to subtract, you could go over here and subtract part of this mask, right? So this is the area that you want to work with. There is a keyboard shortcut. And the keyboard shortcut, if we're on add, this is the default, you can see there's a little tiny plus sign right there in the middle. And on the plus sign means that you're going to add to your mask. But if you want to quickly go over to subtract, you can just hold the option key down or the alt key on the PC, and now you're in subtract mode. So it's kind of like a little toggle switch. So that's probably a little faster way than coming over here and clicking these buttons. This, of course, is the size of the brush that you're working with. And we all know by now that the left and right bracket keys can give us size of brush as well. So that is probably a faster way. And if you're used to it, that's probably how things are going to work. 
So let's go ahead and, and tidy this up just a little bit. We'll actually work with a little bit of a minus. Now, when you're doing a remove, you want to make sure that you've covered up everything you want to remove. That way, it can be removed entirely. If you try to get too tight, too fine with the, the selection, then that may not work as well. And you saw what Lightroom did. Lightroom said, oh, this is the... Uh, this is, let's go ahead and cancel this. I'll show you this one more time. When we're using detect objects and we take, say, a little brush, we just go around this guy. This is what, this is the area that we're telling. You can see that Lightroom actually put a pretty generous amount of area around it to remove. So now all you do is you come over here and you hit the remove button. It takes a few seconds. And the AI looks around and says, hey, do we want to put anything else in there? Yeah, let's just put in the rest of the lawn and the walkway. And whatever trees are in the background. And let's see what it did. Look, at that did a pretty good job. And, of course, down here we have our versions, right? So we can click over here, check out a different version. That still looks good, too. And then a third version. So that is completely removing a subject from uh, an image in Lightroom. And you'll notice too, I chose that image because uh, in the past, if you tried to remove something in the older version, if you tried to remove something that was on the edge of the image, it had a more difficult time. Uh, I don't know what the deal was, but anything that was that ended up off the image. Now, something in the middle of an image was okay, but off to the side, it had a hard time with it. So I think they've corrected a lot of that. So now this new generative fill for Lightroom, it works actually pretty darn good. Let's go into another image here. Now, let's say, for instance, we would like to, let's take detect objects off for a second. And let's say we want to remove this planter. So let's come in here and we'll remove the planter. And we like the way it's covered. We know the whole planter is covered. That's good. So let's click remove. Now let's see what uh, Lightroom has to offer us. Well, look what, look what it did. Lightroom said, oh, they must want something else there. And if we go through the selection here, we can see that it just keeps putting something else in there. And obviously this one's even more distracting. So this isn't going to work for us, right? Let's hit our little garbage can, get back to where we were. And let's try this again. Let's try with detect objects. Cover that. Let's see what it does. We'll hit remove. Look, Lightroom added something else, some little and then a trash can. It obviously thinks it needs something there. So again, let's go back to where we were. Now, I'm going to show you a trick in here that I think is pretty important. So we don't necessarily need to detect objects on. So let's go ahead and paint this. Watch what I do here. I'm going to paint around the object. But I'm also going to paint down here into all of this shadow area that is being cast by that object. So it's not just the object. Also, the shadow is being selected as well. Because Lightroom sees that shadow and says, hey, you must want something there. Otherwise, there's going to be a shadow that doesn't make any sense. So now when you select all of the shadow as well, let's see if it works. We'll hit remove. It'll go through. Think a little bit. Okay, it put, a, it put a light post there. Let's see another version. So that's not too bad, right? One of the versions, it's completely removed. That whole thing is completely removed. So that is how you can best use this program inside of Lightroom is you select. And if you've got a shadow, make sure that you select that shadow because that way it will remove everything. All right, so this is pretty cool. So here is an image of a alleyway with a bunch of power lines and stuff that are all distracting. And let's say we want to remove these power lines. So if we're inside of Lightroom, we can use any of these tools. So if we want to use the remove tool, let's go ahead and try that. See if we can start removing some of the power lines. We'll let the AI think it through, see if it can figure out what to do. And it didn't do a thing. Let's try a different version. Yeah, broken wires. It just doesn't do a great job with that. So let's get rid of that. So this is a reason 
one of the main reasons you're going to want to go into Photoshop. So before you go into Photoshop, what I want you to do is to go up into preferences of Lightroom. Now in the, in the Apple, it's going to be under the Lightroom and it's in the PC, it's going to be under edit. So in the preferences, make sure that your Photoshop version that you're going to edit in is called Photoshop 2025, the newest version. It might say 2024 or whatever your last version is. So this is a real important thing to make sure it does because that way when you come in here and you right click and you go edit in, then that version of Photoshop comes up and says edit in Photoshop 2025. Otherwise you won't have that version. You might say 2024 or whatever it is you have beta. If you were going into beta. So this is how you want to set that up. Make sure that you tell Lightroom where you want to edit outside of Lightroom. So let's click on that and open up. We'll say, open up the original and we'll bring it inside of Photoshop. All right. So here's the image in Photoshop and we're going to do a simple, add a new layer. So we know that's command J and we'll just make a duplicate layer of what we just did. That way we can kind of see before and after. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. All right. So we have our image here in Photoshop and we've made a additional layer, a duplicate layer, just so we can see what we're doing. So when we go into the remove tool, we'll come down here and this is the, this is where the tool was before. And it still is, you know, we're used to having the spot healing brush. And that you're going to use if you have something simple that you want to fix, but it's something more complex like this. We're going to go to the remove tool. So when we go to the remove tool, you'll see a couple little additional things that have been added up here. The mode, if we pull this mode down, we can use uh, generative AI on or off. And this tells you about generative AI, or you can do auto, which it does a mix of using traditional type of cloning methods, as well as AI generative AI. But in this particular case, all we want to do is remove these wires. So the way we do that, we go up to this button that says find distractions and you click on it and you've got a couple of options right now. I imagine this is something that's going to really improve in the future, but right now the only one option we have here for one click removal is wires and cables. So when we click on that, it starts thinking. So we're going to let this think a little bit. I'll speed it up so we don't have to sit and wait through it. But depending on the speed of your computer will depend on how long this process takes. And if you're on the proper operating system for Lightroom and Photoshop. All right, we're back. So in, in my system, that took about a minute and maybe about 65 seconds all toll. But look what it did. It removed all those wires. We'll do it before and after. It went in and found all those wires going all the way down the street and removed all of that. So that is pretty darn cool and pretty fast, you know, considering, yes, it did take 60 seconds, but think about how long it would take if you had to do it by hand, it would be a miserable event of trying to fix that. So that is one of the really cool features that are in the, that's in the new Photoshop 2025. If you're enjoying this kind of content, hit the like button and also be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell icon to be reminded of my next video. I always read and respond to all the comments in the comment section. So feel free to leave a comment, suggestion or question, and I'll get back to you. If you like, you can contact me directly via email at my address, terry at imagelight.com. I'll answer all your questions and be added to my mailing list. So I'll let you know when I get a video released that way as well. So we're back inside Lightroom. Here's an image that I was shooting driving around early morning at the um, Grand Teton National Park. And I came across this area that I thought, wow, this will be great. It was very early in the morning. It was dark. So when you get there, you kind of have to set up, kind of a, get an idea. You can barely see what your composition is going to be like. So I was looking at this whole composition and I looked at this and thought, well, this is, this is kind of what I'd like here. I thought, well, let me try a little wider. And then we have the stream in the foreground, the rocks. I like the rocks, but from a composition standpoint, I didn't find this to be as compelling as I would have liked. So what I did is I realized that I wanted to get kind of the edge of the river to, to have that leading line come in. See how the edge of the river comes in here. And now we have all this area here and this to kind of form our viewer to start at the rocks, come in, see the reflection, see the mountains, come back, do that again. They actually have a path where in this one, 
they don't really have a path. It's just a picture, right? So this gives them a path to look at. But you can see where the problem is. The problem here is, is that no matter where you are in Grand Teton National Park, there's always somebody else that's going to be right next to you. So if you get there early in the morning and set up, don't worry. There'll be people that will crowd in around you. Sometimes they'll put their tripod right next to yours in front of you. Nobody cares. They want to get their picture. But these days, back in the film days, that would have been a pain. But these days, you know, you can go into Photoshop or Lightroom and remove them fairly easily. So this is really going to be a nice benefit for me to remove these people so I can have the landscape that I'm looking for. So what I did with these three images is I did a, an HDR of this shot. So obviously set it on a tripod, took three shots, two stops different. So let's go ahead and merge those into an HDR. So we have three images shot at the same time. And we're going to go ahead and merge those, create our HDR. And of course, Lightroom is going to meld those three images and then bring us back a new image, which is really cool. So here it is right here. It's the HDR image. And let's take a look at this here. So these people are kind of a pain, right? So I think what I want to do is do a little bit of work on this and then bring it into Photoshop and remove those people. So the first thing we're going to do is come in here to our basic panel and we're going to take and do a little bit of shadow lifting. Maybe bring the exposure up just a little bit. And usually what I'll end up doing is I usually always do some sort of, of masking on an image. So the very first thing I'm doing, come in here to masking, we'll work from the top down and we'll pick the sky and we'll mask that and we'll probably lower the exposure of the sky so it's a little darker and then let's go ahead and add a new mask and we'll add a brush mask and we'll just brush all this area over here and we'll brush the grasses over here don't really care about the people because they're going to get removed anyway There we go. And then we're just going to probably do a little bit of basic work on this. Maybe bring the exposure up just a little bit on the grasses and add a little bit of warmth to them. So we'll bring our temperature from blues to the little bit of yellow. And then maybe we'll add a little bit of saturation as well. Good. So that's good enough for now. And probably, you know what, we'll probably do one more mask here. We'll make a brush mask and we'll brush the mountaintop. Maybe remove these trees. So, you know, our trick is just to hold the option key or the alt key down. And we'll remove some of those trees that are part of this. And we'll just darken that just a little bit. Let's go up to our tones, bring exposure down just a little bit. There we go. So that's good. So now what we're going to do is finish this off by going into Photoshop. So let's go ahead and right click, go into edit, Photoshop 2025. All right. So here's our image. And what we're going to do is make a additional layer here. We know to do that by command J, make an additional layer of the exact same thing that we had before. That way I can show you a before and after. So here's the offending problem with this is all these people. That's who we want to get rid of. So in Photoshop, we have the ability when we go over to the remove tool, we can come up here to find distractions and it will say people. Now, if you look at this, you'll see the one click, remember the wires and cables we showed earlier, but this is editable people. So when you click people, it will let, it won't just remove the people. It'll say, oh, it's going to make sure that it wants you to remove the people. So you can see that it put all of these, these highlights around it. So this guy didn't get completely done. Let's go ahead and get the rest of him. Let's get his tripod leg. Let's get this person here, their camera. 
their tripod who set this right up in front of me while I was shooting. And I didn't say anything, thought about it, but then I thought, eh. And as it turned out, a whole lot of other people jumped on board and you can see people over here taking selfies of each other and all kinds of things. Beautiful spot and people are kind of somewhat absorbed into themselves, but is what it is, right? All right, so now we've got this and we've got the uh, find distractions, help us grab all those people. Then all we have to do is we have to say, okay, how do we want to do this? So under these versions here, if we were going to say uh, generative AI off, so we don't want to use any generative and we hit this button here, let's give it a try. So it uses not generative fill, but uses the same content aware that we've had in the past. And what it does, it puts in grasses and things that we think looks good. It's not bad, but you can kind of see here, it's a little repetitive and a little bit weird. So let's undo that. And let's go back and try that again. Go over to our remove, find our distractions, tell it we're looking for people. It looks around, finds the people. And we can edit and add to it. So we'll add this guy again. This person here who just was not my friend that day who had to get right in front of me. But that's all right. I'm over it. It doesn't bug me anymore. Um, let's get this little green thing. Somebody's jacket they left right there in the mad rush in the dark to get a spot, right? If you remember, we started with generative AI off and it used kind of an okay system for getting rid of this. We also have a couple of other options. We have generative fill AI on or which I think is better is this auto button. And the auto button does, it does a combination of both traditional methods of content aware, as well as generative fill to remove these people. So let's go ahead and give that a try. Hit the check button. Look at that. They're totally removed. Trees were replaced. And if we zoom out, we can see that this looks pretty darn good. Now we have our composition we were looking for of bringing in this side of the river and of course this side and then we have our river that comes down and bends but we don't have any of the distractions of people there so i think this is pretty cool being able to remove things like that people that will rudely oh did i say that i didn't mean that people who will just jump in front of you and get their got to get their picture but in this case it's okay we can just remove them and we don't have to have a confrontation even though I wanted to, I'm over it. I really, no, seriously, I'm over it. Um, this is a fantastic way to go. We can remove people real easily. And there you get back to your fine landscape image that you were looking for in the first place. All right, so that's how Generative Fill works in Lightroom as well as in Photoshop. I think it's new. Go download it. I think you're going to be happy with it. And I'll have more videos coming up. See you next time.